Hello, this is Steve Ramona, your host for Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. I want to thank our sponsors, Infone, and with Infone, you can place your business on everybody's cell phone, turn their business into a web app, and with a click of a button, they'll have access to you 24-7. And also Pantheon.fm. Have you ever thought about monetizing and taking your podcast to the next level? Well, Pantheon can do that. Let us show you how. Reach out to Steve Ramona, the host, at infoco slash SR1, and I will go over with you how you can make your podcast really stand out. Let's enjoy the show. Thanks again, everybody. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. This is your host, Steve Ramona, and this is going to be a very unique show because this is a very unique guest, and that's a true compliment. Talk about somebody overcoming an obstacle, which we all have obstacles, some bigger, some smaller. This lady is the real deal from coming back from that and just succeeding and thriving and helping others. Hey, Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's just a joy and an honor to be here and just share my knowledge to your community and just grow together. <laughs> I want to jump into the story. I, I think that's where we need to begin, that people know where you've come from and where you are today. Let's start with that. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. I, I grew up in a beautiful family, Steve, and I always had a lot of support, but I always was a high performer from a very young age. And the reason why that's important is because it was a part of who I was, I really started at a young age, started connecting kind of love and attention to high performance because I was good at a lot of things. I was good at sports. I was good at school. I was good at making friends. I was good at a lot of things. And that's a beautiful thing, right? But what started happening from a very young age is I started again connecting love, attention, worthiness to being quote good at things. Um, and as I continued through my teenage years, and then I was sought after by many universities on a D1 track and field scholarship, I started seeing even more of that. So that imprint of kind of high success, high performance and connection to my worth, my significance continued to build. And the reason why that's important is it finally got to the point that I just felt like I could never do enough. I felt like I was always afraid of quote, losing people, whether they be family, friends, um, coaches, it just, I was constantly in anxiety and depression. I was kind of that poster child that we hear of a lot of athletes that they look like they're smiling successful. Like I said, I was an all American. I had a lot of quote, great things, but behind closed doors, I was really struggling. I was in darkness to be quite frank, Steve. And it was in that mental, emotional state, not really the physical. And that's when I started exploring, like what is true wellness for one and two, I got to get out of this because I was to the point of taking my life. I was to the point of like, I don't want to be here anymore. And as a practitioner by trade, I knew I'm like, that's a really messed up brain. That is really a space that I know from an innate creation state, humans want to survive. They want to thrive. Like what's going on in my brain and my mind that's not aligning for me even wanting to be here anymore. And everyone, I want you to be very honest. Like I was successful during all this, quote, successful. And I was smiling and I was being there as the friend, the sister, the daughter, the athlete, but I just was getting to the point of self implosion. So when I had my come to Jesus moment, Steve, I was literally on the floor of the kitchen floor. It seems to be the bathroom of the kitchen floor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Where we have these moments. And even though I had all these successes, I was in this shame too of why am I feeling this? Because I do have a lot, but I knew I had to do something because I was at that point of like, I want to check out. I was planning it around tax season, I literally like trying to get my paperwork done. I mean, that's the kind of brain I was dealing with. I'm like, whoa, pause. Then my mother called. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting how that all happens? I was on the floor and literally she called, how are you? Not expecting anything. And I literally just opened up. I'm like, I am not doing well. And when I started to share with my family about how I was struggling in my mental and emotional health, no matter how I looked on the outside and thus began my journey toward what true wellness was. And this was kind of later college into my late twenties where I then went into PT school. Then I opened up my first PT practice where I was able to treat people holistically and integratively. And what that means 
deal with the mind, the body, the soul. I worked with high level athletes to military PTSD, to clients with cancer. And I had the honor to be along their healing to thriving journey because we all know when we don't have our health, we have nothing. We can't show up powerfully. So I got to help people open up about their own struggle, especially in the mental space. So I got to be a practitioner for many years and a healer, which God just gave me the hands to heal. And now in the last few years with my continued journey, Steve, I now get to coach and consult a lot of high performers, leaders, entrepreneurs that are connected in that way of worth significance and needing to always succeed in that egoic sense and really create more of a healthy performance state because at the end of the day the creator god wants you to use your gifts and be high performing but still know that you're worthy so i've been able to really help a lot of business leaders and entrepreneurs really heal themselves fully create that vitality in the way they lead their business and the way they li- they lead their athletic teams. And I get to speak across the country on that. And I call it the wellness leadership dance. You know, I've been an entrepreneur and a practitioner for gosh, 22 years. So now I get to wow. combine wellness and leadership for those other leaders that want to really create impact in a powerful way and be high performers without losing their mind. And I really believe that we need that healed leader more than ever in the day and age that we live in. So that is my passion to see leaders become even more epic in their wellness and their powerful leadership traits so they can get on with really living their legacy and giving what they really need to give to the world in a powerful way. (laughs) It's an incredible story. And I've heard it before. I'm glad the audience got to hear it. I appreciate you being very open about it because it's it's a tough story. But how much is that helping you now as you coach these high performers with issues? Oh my gosh. You know, um, one thing I work with them on a lot is resilience, you know, mental, emotional agility, resilience, increasing mental, emotional bandwidth during adversity, change growth. However, you guys want to look at it as business leaders, as high performers, we all know (laughs) we have failed days. We have failed months. We have failed years, but how do you pick yourself back up? How do you teach your team to navigate change, growth, and adversity and create a bigger bandwidth of resilience so you can get on to the next thing. I'm going to tell you right now, everybody, the good leaders don't have less junk going on. What they have learned to do is utilize tools and frameworks to get out of the weeds and back into their lane to create the impact because all of us are getting things personally, professionally, internally in our business, externally 2020, you know, in our business, in our life that is influencing us. And I believe that the superpower for any high performer or leader, business leader, executive is honestly mental, emotional wellness and resilience optimization, because life is going to life you. (laughs) It's going to life you. And the more you can kind of embrace change and literally hit it head on. There's a lot of tools. We can go through those today to really help you increase that bandwidth. You're going to get back in your lane, back into high performance, joy flow without all of this affecting you. So I love to help people really optimize that in a more powerful way. And we have unique tools to do that. Tools are important. Yeah. Question I ask a lot of leaders and you're a great leader. What is your definition of a servant leadership? Oh, gosh. Well, all of you and you, I don't know if you can see this right now. I have my heart necklace on. And just before I got on, Stephen and I were talking about just the synchronicity. And I even forgot that I had it on. We're talking about servant leadership, a heart podcast. You know, I'm such a big believer in servant leadership and that being the primary characteristic of leaders. I believe they will go next level with their business, their impact when they are having a servant's heart. And how I describe it, Steve, is I call it going back and flipping the burgers with your team. (laughs) I call it back end leadership because I believe leaders need to lead from the front, but also know intuitively when they need to come back and connect with their team, connect with what problems are going on, connecting with maybe struggles or bottlenecks. I think sometimes as we grow, especially if we're accelerating our growth really rapidly, we forget to connect with the team. And when we do that, we create connection with them of caring, of safety, of psychological safety for your team, and also them wanting to 100% buy into your cause. I hope that you've been clear on what your vision and mission is for your company. That's why they started with you, but to continue with you, to want to continue to up the ante and be next level in their skills that they give you, they want to feel your heart coming back to them. 
and coming back, you guys, and like I said, flipping the burgers, what do you, what do you need from us? What support do you need to help us accelerate our mission? And often that goes back to sweeping the floors, going back to flipping the burgers with them. You guys, I spent three months last summer living out of a bag. You know what I was doing during that time? I was going around to small businesses and asking teams, not the leaders, teams, what they desired from their leader. You know what the top two things were? We need more tools to help with our mental health because we're still struggling post 2020. We feel like we're struggling in that. We can't really talk about that with our leader. Number two was feeling the leader was coming back and listening to them, listening to their ideas, listening to their problems, listening to their struggles, going back and flipping the burgers with them, you guys. And that to me is a true servant's heart. There are many aspects of leadership that are so powerful, but I believe that is a Jesus quality as well. You know, he led from ahead, you know, he gave sermons on the mount that are forever in history. And he also went back and washed people's feet. Okay. He cared about what was going on with his disciples. He cared about what was going on with his people. And I believe that Jesus, no matter if you believe he was real or not, or just a fictional character, he's a great example of servant leadership of going back, speaking on the sermon on the mount and then coming back and washing feet. And that is just as powerful and creates connection, safety, and people wanting to buy into yeah. your cause. And it's very humbling. Remember, we as servant leaders need to remember we can't do this alone. And that to me, that's a long answer. See, but honestly, to me, that really truly is a servant's heart is really going back to your people and making sure you're doing that on a regular basis, especially during growth, accelerated growth. And the recap, I love the fact that a leader works from the front and the back. Mm -hmm. you yes. show example in the front like being clean the bathroom when it's dirty your restaurant manager to yeah. okay you go do it you go do an extra level of work that you've never done before uh, a friend of mine oak who's a retired attorney general he says if somebody says they're a leader his only question he asks them who you're mentoring today and if they say nobody you're not a leader at that time it's not yeah. a bad thing yeah. and it's always in my head so I'm always looking to mentor people because I want to be a leader now, can everybody be a leader? You know, it's funny. I've been asked this before. Um, mm -hmm. I will say this. At a basic, basic level, you guys, we are leading at least ourselves. So I believe in mentorship to help you with that, to help you stay in integrity with the things you say you're going to do. Because you're at the end of the day, no matter how much mentorship you have out there, you are leading yourself. At the end of the day, you are the one doing you. With that said, I believe as far as who is asked upon just like there's other gifts by different people. There are certain people that definitely have the higher level gift of yeah. leading teams. So no, so to answer your question, no, I don't think everybody are leaders. You know, we need leaders and we need workers. And you guys, by the way, I want to be very clear. It doesn't mean here and here. I mean, we have different talents. So at the end of the day, no, I don't believe everybody are leaders. You know, I believe that there are people calling themselves leaders that probably aren't great leaders yet and they're refining the craft. Yep. But I do believe that there's what I call the 1% leader that actually is really stepping into the space and realize that is a number one gift of theirs. And by the way, we definitely need those, everyone, with everything going on in the world. And we need you to accelerate that. And we also need to be healed. This is why I'm so passionate about what I'm doing because I can filter out those other characteristics of the 1% leader. And I love to work with those people because I find that that is their number one superpower is leadership. And I define leadership a little bit differently. Leaders to me, honestly, are usually not necessarily good at a lot of things. I'm going to say that again. Leaders are not necessarily good at a lot of things. What they're very good at is getting very clear on their vision and mission and knowing how to pull out and draw in the right people for their vision and mission, knowing how to delegate appropriately and fan the creativity and innovation of each of their roles. Okay. Henry Ford knew nothing about cars, everyone. Did you know that? He knew nothing about cars. Uh, he made the Ford car. Think about Steve Jobs. He knew nothing about computers, you guys. Nothing. He was brilliant. He was smart, but he knew nothing. He surrounded himself with people that knew how to get it done. So I believe they were top two leaders, Henry Ford and Steve Absolutely. Jobs. And one of the main characters that they had is they weren't good at everything that was needed for their company, not even close. They didn't even know anything about the product, but they were passionate about it. They were clear about it and they knew who to pull in and then using a servant's heart of, to help them fan it, create a safe, high level environment to fan their innovation, creativity and their unique roles. And before you know it, they're taken off. 
So to me, that is we're kind of stepping into leadership characteristics is that they know how to do that more than that. They're good at something. That to me is usually a 1% leaders. They're able to boom, 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 escalate. I really believe that. And I love those kind of leaders, you know, because yeah. that's a, that's a superpower. That's if they're good at it too, that's a bonus, but that's one of the number one things I think most 1% leaders need right now to accelerate at massive rates. <laughs> yeah. And you said something really important for everybody in this audience and anybody listening. We all lead. You're a father, you lead a family. You're an older sibling, you, you lead the siblings and yeah. you're a community leader. So we're always leading at different levels. You're right. Nobody, not everybody could be uh, Steve Jobs or Henry Ford. Right. But I, I love that. And find the best place for you to lead and lead. Yes. 100%. Small, medium, or large. I love yeah. that. I'm glad you answered it that way. Yeah. So before I forget, first thing is, how can somebody reach out to you if they have questions or want to work with you? Absolutely. The best place to reach me, I'm the most active on Instagram under the or the Jennifer Watson. And I answer my own DMs. If you want to connect with me and learn a little bit more about working with me, I have one on one to group programs that are meant for the high performer leader, business leader and executive that really wants to create balance and wellness and leadership and really go next level and create the impact that they want to create. I'm also active on LinkedIn under Jennifer Watson Leadership. And you can also find me on my website, jenniferwatsonleadership.com to learn a little bit more about me and my programs. I do a lot of speaking across the country as well and some of these aspects of leadership growth and wellness and that dynamic duo. And I'm a huge believer in resilience and mental wellness, which I'm an advocate for, for all leaders. And it's a still such a, a you know a, a epidemic that's going on. And we don't even realize that people are really suffering. So if that's you too, Hey, there's no shame or blame in that. I work with high performers on all aspects of life and I'd love to support you. <laughs> yeah. And it's August, 2023. I say that because the fall of 2023, you say you have some, we talked earlier, your group calls coming that people could sign up for. Yes, 100%. So I usually onboard for my fall leadership program. And it's funny, we're talking about next level leaders. It's a next level leadership program. We really look at next level leadership traits that are needed, I'll say post 2020, to really help you get through the noise of change and growth and actually continue on that high performance for you, your team, your tribe, and the people you want to affect for impact. And yes, the unique part about it, uh, other than the next level leadership traits, is really pulling into that mentally emotional wellness for you and your team, because I find that that is the other big piece as well to accelerate you in powerful ways. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have a podcast as well. I would love you guys to listen in on that. And by the end of the year, I'm looking to start in, you know, in the process of making my own book, you know, my first book yet. So I'm really excited about that. And I love to continue to speak across the country. So if I'm in your city, for any of you that are listening, you know, come in, say hi, I would love to meet you in person. I'm a hugger and I definitely have a heart that loves to just hug on other people's hearts. So yes. <laughs> you talked about fanning the message yes which i love so i'm going to do that right now yeah the first four people that reach out to you jennifer i'm going to give them an amazon 20 dollars gift card oh uh, wow so how that works is super simple just mention the podcast or my name or both i hope it's both you remember both doesn't matter but just mention this show and she'll just reach out to me i'll get your email and i'll send you an instant 20 dollars amazon gift card because that's fanning the message I, i'm a leader and I'm a leader in getting other people to get their message like yours out that can help others serve others. And yeah. that's what I want to do. And please reach out. Now, if you're not one of the top four, please reach out. As you could tell, Jennifer can help you. And I want to lead into, because I'm a big sports guy and I'm starting to meet some athletes, Hall of Famers. Yeah. That's a big thing with sports. You went through it. People look at, you know, the Michael Jordan's, you know, LeBron James, uh, Tom Brady's, we see their public life out and it's, it's gotta be crazy for them. Is that really the true, you know, the inner person, the inner self is really just not destroyed, but just having problems. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting. And I, I want you guys to be very clear here. You know, a lot, some people, and I'm going to be devil's advocate. Some people looking like, you guys, you're successful. Give me a break. You have mental health issues. I've heard that you guys, I'm just throw that out there. Cause I, I, I actually hear you, you know, on that. And I just want all of you to understand that, you know, you don't know where someone's backstory is. You don't know where they're coming from. So it's really easy for us to kind of look at all the glory for one. And that's true in business. Like we see someone do well, like, oh, they had it easy. They're doing well. Like just be, you know, take a deep breath and be careful on that because a lot of us have darkness that maybe we haven't fully shared. Okay. Even if on the surface, 
it looks like we have it, quote, all, okay? I can guarantee you from the people I've interviewed, from my own journey myself, those that look like they have it all often don't, okay? With the athlete, it's just, we could have probably a whole other podcast on that, yeah. Steve, but I do actually work with a lot of past athletes. Some went all the way pro, you know, or college like me, and there's beautiful characteristics that athletes bring in to the rest of life in many ways, from leadership skills to high performance to rising during adversity to yada, 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 which is a beautiful thing. But what I find again is there's such many of us for a variety of reasons from childhood, from just the way that we grew up, really connect the performance to significance, to worthiness, to love, to whatever word you want to use. And that's where we start seeing the breakdown, you guys. And I've interviewed enough high level athletes to know that some of these words I'm, I'm using are definitely very, very common with them. Like, I just felt like I, I couldn't keep anymore and I finally self imploded and I couldn't compete anymore. I started breaking down or I started wanting to take my life where sometimes it did start affecting their performance. You know, we've heard books from Tiger Woods to Michael Phelps to who, I mean, these guys were gold medalists and they were literally behind closed doors wanting to slip their wrists, you guys. And I literally say that in a very sensitive way. So my point is there's a real complexity to athletes that they can be really high performing for a long period of time before they quote self implode. And they can have this, the, the reason they can do that is because they've learned skill sets from athleticism and leadership and health and ways to kind of compensate around it. So in some ways it's brilliant, but in a lot of ways it isn't because it finally breaks everyone. So my job is to let people know the subtle signs for themselves and the people that they're working with to help with intervention, because we have way too much intervention out there now, everyone for mental, emotional health yeah. to catching the signs early. So with athletes, we cover it up very quickly and very well. So sometimes that intervention isn't always going to happen, but this is why I'm a big advocate when I speak on subtle signs, behaviors, not just athletes, but I use them because they're very good at protecting and hiding that are very subtle that you can see that they're breaking down. So whether you are willing to take that step or your family member or friend that sees it happening, there are tools, places out there to help this person pull back into a healthy state of performance and at the same time, not lose their wellness, you guys, because at the end of the day, now I have a healthy brain and now I get to help other past athletes and high performers do things because they want to master something. And they don't care if they fail. They're just on the journey of mastering something. And that's where I'm at is I just enjoy mastering. I enjoy high performance for high performance sake. But if I don't do it every day and I fail, which you guys, I fail a lot. <laughs> Most high performers that you see all this success, you guys, they have failed 80% more than they have succeeded. I guarantee it. I've again, interviewed so many people. We have failed a lot more than we've succeeded. You see all the successes, but now when I fail, I'm like, it's just a learning moment. I never can take it in as a personal degradation anymore. And I think yeah. that's really where I go with a lot of athletes too. And it's a long answer, but there's a lot of complexity with athletes. We hide very well. There are subtle signs for any of you listening. We can go through those. We have tools out there for family members and friends that can start seeing that in people. I want you to take note on that. You know, I just spoke at my alma mater, Wisconsin Madison this past March to a bunch of student leaders and they had just, you know, witnessed literally some of them, you know, a girl taking her life that was on the women's track team that was high level 4.0, all American. And she took her life, you guys. So to sit with them and give them tools, not only to deal with navigating the loss, but being aware of other people out there that could be having issues with this that are high performing. So it was sad, but a real honoring for me to be able to give them that. And they absorbed it, Steve. The young people of today are absorbing this stuff because they realize the importance of it. When I was back in college, it was suck it up buttercup. You know, now we're having kids like I'm all about it, giving the tools. I can't tell you how many kids came up to me and I was on stage doing tapping and energy work and they were all about it. And I really think that our next level leaders, our young leaders are going to knock it out of the park because they are getting this, this mental health and the complexity yeah. of I'm succeeding, but I'm navigating this problem. How can I get through it? So, yeah. <laughs> I like that. You, you, you read my mind because I wanted you to well, weld in business because sports and business are so aligned. 
Yes, yes. And business no, owners have the same problem as celebrities. Oh, 100%, 100%. But, you know, here's the deal, you know, celebrities and athletes, you know, we have so many amazing skill sets. You guys to be leaders and high performers, they're so good. So when I say this, you guys, we do have that. But I believe these skill sets can be taken too far where we start ignoring our mental emotional health. And that's why we end up self imploding. And again, just like, I always like to give physical examples. So that's easier for you guys to grasp. It's just like when you see like a football player somehow with a broken leg, get on the field and finish the game because it's like the Super Bowl. There's a lot of high level that they train to that they can break through physical issues and keep going. Even though if they did that forever, the leg would finally fully fracture. Right. The yeah. same thing with mental emotional health. Everyone is, you know, high performers, including, you know, Hollywood stars and athletes, a lot of times can keep going because they've learned and trained their body with these skill sets. But again, they can be taken too far. You guys, your superpowers and your skills can be taken too far. That's something I talk about with high performers, knowing how to manage and curtail your skill while balancing out how am I doing mentally, emotionally, physically again rewiring that brain you guys i was i grew up in the suck it up buttercup like yeah. you just don't deal with yeah. it no you guys when you suppress that you finally self-implode we've seen it because we see it all the time we're like why did that hollywood star take their life why did that you know athlete high level athlete why write a book about how much their life sucked when they won 30 gold medals michael phelps or whatever it was yeah you know, this is why and you guys instead of going they have it all that's crazy we can take that in too, because all of us that are high performers that maybe are not at that stage, but are still high performers in what we do, start being aware, like, am I here? You know, start having that conversation with yourself and then ultimately with another person and then another person and that stuff gets out of the closet and you can start healing. Again, there's so many tools, yeah. you guys out there. Again, I've worked with PTSD, with military, to women that have been sexually assaulted, to athletes that are breaking down because they're just tired of being high performance. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I'm telling you, there's tools for all of you to heal this, Heal the brain. There's a hundred thousand miles worth of blood vessels in your brain. There are over a hundred billion neuronal nerve connections in your brain out of any organ in the body. Okay. Everyone, do you think it can adapt and change and grow with the right tools? Yes. Just like your gut can change with better food choices. Your brain wants to change, but you have to be willing to become aware. Am I taking my gifts too far? Am I tanking in my middle health? Can I step out in courage and ask one person, I need help. And from there, you can change these stories. And I know that Steve and I were talking about this at the time. We can change the stories of the Robin Williams, of the people and high-level athletes coming out with these books that are struggling, that are reflective of our own journey. Because a lot of us can relate with this. And we start changing that outcome, in you guys, because we need you. Gosh, what did Jordan Peterson said say once? He started crying when he was saying this. Like, you know, it... it it kills me to see people feel like they're they're not needed on this world, like they're ready to check out. We so need you. You guys fear your unique genetic blueprint. I am an identical twin. I have a 99.9% .9 genetic blueprint of me. And I'm still needed differently than her. I mean, I get chills talking about that. Like if you guys get nothing else out of this and you're in that space of like, I want to check out Jennifer, we need you. Take one step today, talk to me connect with one person and I guarantee you can start this path with tools and the right thing. I don't care what your past is. I don't care if you look like you're successful in the front of me or you don't look successful. I'll just let's, let's get you on the right path because you're not supposed to be there and there's help. There's help for you. I'm an example of that. There's some of you I interviewed that are, and we can get you on that path to live the life that you were meant to. And that's such a passion of mine. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. And we run out of time. We'll have to have the part two because there's a lot sure. more to be said. With that being said, thank you for being on your nuggets and knowledge you put out there. You're going to help somebody today. And I hope you help a lot. Don't forget the Amazon gift card. First four people, I will take care of you. With that being said, what is your one of your best tips you can give my audience to help mm -hmm. them in life? Yeah. You know, there's so many, Steve, but I would say this, I've lost a lot of close people to me in my life. And when you're on the deathbed with someone, you're holding their hand as you're going into the next life, regret of things they didn't do. Number one, number one, if I could give anything to any of you, we have one life, you guys, and we want to maximize it. I go with a quote, one of my favorite quotes, sometimes you have to take a leap 
and build your wings on the way down. If there's something in your heart that you want to give to the world and there's all these excuses in your head and you're scared, I get it, you guys. Most of us that have succeeded have had that feeling. Step onto the ledge, jump off. You're going to get the right people coming to you. I believe the creator is going to support that willingness to step into something you feel is fully you. So be willing to take that leap off the ledge and be willing to spread your wings on the way down, be willing to fail. And I guarantee you, you will win. At the end of the day, you will win. <laughs>